Is the college football playoff going to expand to 16 really soon? Is that going to happen? Dennis Dodd at CBS Sports put out a really interesting article, and it's there's a lot that goes in it, right? So we'll pull it up on your screen here so you can see what's going on, why college football playoff expansion could push out to 16 teams uh, sooner than you may think. It says some invested parties already prefer a 16-team format, and future CFP rights holders might as well. And let's pause this. Let's, let's get that crap out of here. Um, when a college football playoff working group group submitted options for an expanded playoff field 20 months ago, it says. The main surprise was that the CFP was that far down the road considering expansion whatsoever. The contract for a 14 bracket had five years left to run that was locked in. The second biggest shock is that the working group had considered as many as 16 teams. And now, so we finally got the 12 team model, right? And even then, we're still kind of second guessing it, right? Because the way that they've got it set up, the top four conference champions all get a buy and the top six conference champions all get in. Okay. Um, I mean, let's, let's look at some of these conference champion, right? Like Kansas State would not have gotten a bye, but Clemson and Utah would have. Well, Clemson lost to Tennessee by 17. Did they really deserve a bye? And then he got Utah, who lost by 14 in the Rose Bowl. Now, granted, Cam Rising got hurt in that game, so maybe it would have gone a little bit different. But you're talking about the Big Ten's number three team that just beat the Pac-12 champion. I mean, you're talking about, uh, I guess, the SEC's number three team that just beat the ACC champion. Do we really need to do that? If we move to 16, would that get rid of some of this uh, this cockamamie crap that they've got going on here? I mean, I understand wanting to give it at least some of these teams a fighting chance. Uh, and if you're at, if you're hosting a game at home, like maybe, but like, yeah, I guess if you keep you, if you give Utah a bye, then that keeps them in the field longer, keeps one part of the country in because that, that might would have been the only team that was in the field from the Pac-12 this year. It would, it might've been the only West Coast team. Now, if you expand it to 16, then you're looking at even more, right? So this, this goes through, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, this goes through a few more things here. Um, let's see. The Mac commissioner said, I think 16 is the number. Four was better than two 12 is better than four 16 is better uh than uh, whatever 12 uh craig thompson who is the outgoing mountain west commissioner said 16 is the most natural because nobody gets a buy at that point right everybody plays uh tcu coach sonny dykes said uh i've thought a 16 team playoff is superior i've thought that way for a long time and what you do and now the, the first one that actually said anything about this was in july ohio state's athletic director gene smith uh, was quoted by espn as saying 16 just seems to be out there you can't really ignore it yeah you got more games like, it, that's more inventory. That's more money. Now, all of the ones that have come out and said anything for this article are all G5. So, obviously, they would stand to benefit quite a bit. Um, but uh, my my issue here is a couple of different things. All right. So, so let's let's move over to um, what I was talking about before, the, the ones that would have made it into this field. Uh, it says, now project the field out to 16 teams. Not only would Tulane have made it, but so would Oregon, Oregon State, Florida State, and Washington this year. It says, the Pac-12 has not put a team in the CFP over the last six seasons. In a 12-team bracket, it would get one team placed. In a 16-team bracket, uh, based on this year's CFP rankings, the Pac-12 would have four teams competing for the national title. Now, I believe that USC would have been in there somewhere, but regardless, what we're looking at is just bananas. Uh, my view is we needed to bring people into the national championship, said SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey, who did not speak specifically on a 16-team bracket. He said, I don't think it's healthy for college football and college football globally that a West Coast team has not been in the playoffs since 2016. It's a national game. Okay, so I tweeted out about this. Let's talk about this national game, okay? The regular season is a playoff. The Pac-12 has had opportunities to get teams into the playoff field. If you go back and actually look at the situations that they were in, they were in playoff situations multiple times. That's uh, The Pac-12 was in those situations. Like, this is, it's it's so interesting to me. Um, remember, the 2020 season, there wasn't really a Pac-12 can, right? USC was undefeated until the Pac-12 championship game, and then, even then, they weren't a great team, but they would have been undefeated at 6-0 if they had not lost to uh, Oregon in the Pac-12 title game, an Oregon team that wasn't even technically supposed to be. There. That's an Oregon team that had lost to Oregon State. In 2021, every Pac-12 team had at least three losses, if not more. Back in 2019, number six, Oregon, lost on the road to Arizona State in November. You can't do that if you're vying for a playoff berth. But then, in the Pac-12 title game, number five, Utah, lost to Oregon. So then Oregon goes to the Rose Bowl and everybody's happy and fun and it's Oregon and Wisconsin and whatever, right? In 2018, I believe that USC had two losses in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Um, But aside from them, like USC might have had two, but everybody else had at least three. There was no viable option. They played their way 
out of the playoff. What what good is having USC or Oregon or Washington or whoever from the West Coast? What good is it to get them into the playoff for a game? Which one out of what I guess if, if you're doing 16, it's going to be eight games. You're going to get them in for one game and then they'll be on because that's what happens. I just I, I don't I don't really understand why they. Let me take that back. I do understand why they believe it is so important to get uh, the country involved in, and we see it with college basketball. We see it with the NFL, etc. The more teams that you get longer in the season, the more games they watch, the bigger the audiences, etc. Right? The more interest in the sport there is, and if you can ever get some kind of an upset like we had with TCU over Michigan, well, it kind of changes the narrative. It kind of changes things, right? I, if we are changing this sport to be only about money, and that is absolutely what we are doing. We're doing it with the players. We're doing it with, but with this started back in the early 80s when Georgia and Oklahoma sued the NCAA to get their TV right. It started the path then. It moved to 1992 when, or well, I guess it was 91, when Roy Kramer pushed the NCAA so that they could create the SEC championship game. It's it's always been about adding more money. Everything is about adding more value, adding money, et cetera, et cetera. At the end of the day, this is what's best for the sport. And by best for the sport, I mean, it's what will bring more money to the sport, which in turn will bring more eyeballs. As far as the health of the sport, the uh, the sanctity of the sport, if you will, eh, I mean, that's another discussion, right? Is this really what's best? Do we want college athletes playing 17 games? I mean, this is going to lead to a whole lot of different things. If they're going to do something like this, especially this 12-team thing, uh, you're going to have to move to a running clock. You're going to have to take some of these plays out of the game. you got to find a way to do it. We, Chris and I, I believe, talked years ago about this, about moving to where uh, the clock runs on incompletion. The clock continues to run even when you go out of bounds. Like, all those types of things, because you can take out like two to three games worth of plays from a a full season if you just keep the clock going. I think that's the biggest thing that they got to do. But man, I got a little fired up. (laughs) I apologize. Uh, This thing's going to go over an hour and I didn't intend for that. Uh, But regardless, um, yeah, so let's let's take a look at that. How did the conference champions do this year? You know, uh, Kansas State lost by 25. Clemson lost by 17. Utah lost by 14. I mean, did any of those deserve buys? Are we, what what are we talking about? Hey, if you like this video, Go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.